Welcome everyone to this video. Today we're going to go over the best settings for Windows Defender aka Windows Security, the built-in antivirus in Windows 11 and Windows 10. Now I do have it opened up here on the screen. We're going to focus here on the navigation menu starting with the virus and threat protection. If I click on that, it's going to pull up some additional options. Please note the scan option. Automatically Windows Defender will scan your computer using a quick scan. However, periodically you do want to come in here and click on the full scan option and run this just to make sure that nothing is getting through the cracks. Now, if I go back and go down just a little bit further underneath virus and threat protection settings and click on manage settings. In short, you want to make sure real time protection is turned on cloud delivered protection, automatic sample submission and tamper protection. Make sure all four of these options are turned on. If you have privacy concerns about the automatic sample submission, I would recommend that you encrypt the individual files and folders that are most sensitive that you are concerned about privacy. An additional option is you can add exclusions by clicking on this option if you'd like to do that as well. We'll talk about controlled folder access here in just a moment if I go back and then scroll down further right here. These are the protection updates now. Windows Defender will update automatically. However, you should come in here periodically and just do a manual update just to make sure and confirm that it is updating. Your antivirus must update in order to be effective. And then the last option, ransomware protection. If I click on this option, it will take us to the controlled folder access. By default, this option will be turned off. You will want to turn it on. Now to be completely upfront, this is not the best ransomware protection available out there. There are third party antivirus solutions that do provide better protection. Regardless, this is better than nothing. And it is true that it is a little bit of a nuisance because at times it will block legitimate installations of programs that are safe. Regardless, again, it is better to have this turned on. If it does block something that you absolutely know to be safe and legitimate, you can quickly and simply allow it through. A notification will pop up, you just click on it and then give the application that you are trying to install access. Or you can come here and click on allow an app through controlled folder access. Going to the next option in the navigation account protection. This is basically controlling how you sign in as well as your account. Make sure that your Microsoft account has a very strong password as well as two factor authentication. And here you can manage your sign in options if I click on this. This will give you all the different ways to sign in. Please note these top three are not the most secure. I would avoid facial recognition and fingerprint recognition because those are easy to exploit. And a pin, you can use a pin, but do not use a short pin. If you're going to use a pin, make sure it's at least 20 characters long. But a security key or a very strong password would be the best options. And then down here, dynamic lock settings. If you click on this right here, it will say automatically lock your device when you are away. Or alternatively, you can just remember to use the Windows key and L as in Lima to lock your computer when you step away. Next, going back to the navigation bar, let's click on firewall and network settings. In short, you want to make sure all of these are turned on at all times. Like it mentions here, this controls who and what can access your networks or your devices via the network. Additionally, please note you do have an option if you click on one of these. You can check this box to block all incoming connections to increase security even further. If I go back right here, there is the option to allow an app through the firewall as needed. Going back to the navigation, device security. Please note the options that display here depend on what hardware you have in your computer as well as the settings in your BIOS on your motherboard. And so if I go over something here that you do not see in yours, it either means the hardware in your computer does not support one of these options or you need to change a setting in your BIOS. The first one, core isolation. If I click on this, there is the option to turn this on, which basically helps prevent malware from accessing certain parts of your computer by using virtualization. Please note if you turn this on and experience any issues with apps or performance, this can at times cause those types of problems, but I've used it for a long time and really haven't run into too many issues. Just please be aware that if those come up, you may need to turn this off to resolve those issues. But to also be clear, this is a very good security feature. If I go back, TPM, which adds additional encryption to your device. If you're using Windows 11, this should already be turned on. Clicking on this will only give additional details. There's no additional settings or options here. And then secure boot, this is going to be again controlled from your motherboard. As long as your motherboard and hardware support this option, you do want to make sure this is turned on. Going back to the navigation, the next option is device performance and health. This is very general 
information, but please note that it is available. I've never once had it pop up or notify me of any issues. Going back to the navigation, the next option is family options where you can set up parental controls and controlling how much time a user can spend on a device. Please note that this does require you to get pretty involved in the Microsoft ecosystem by using Microsoft accounts. All of that can be controlled right here and you can click on view family settings. And then the last option listed here is the protection history where you can go to get a list of prior actions. I do recommend that you go down here to the gear icon and make sure that you click on manage notifications and make sure all of the boxes are checked and everything is turned on. You always, always want to be notified of any behavior or actions your security is taking because it can include warnings and alerts. Additionally, here in settings, you can manage other security providers or apps that you may have on your device. You can click on manage providers, but I would recommend that you stick to just one solution using multiple can often cause conflicts and privacy issues can arise. So whichever solution you're using, if you're using Windows Defender slash Windows Security, just use it for everything. Now there is one option that's missing from the Windows Security window. And if you come here to the search and type in app and browser control right here, if you click on this setting, it will pull it up. And here you'll find some additional settings and security options. The first one being reputation based protection. If I click on this, you do want to make sure all of these are toggled on. And this does work in conjunction with Microsoft Edge. You do not have to use Microsoft Edge because other browsers do have something similar to this feature. But there is a real benefit and something to be said for using everything within and under one umbrella. I did recently do a video on how to increase privacy and security and harden Microsoft Edge. I will link that video down below. But again, in short, just make sure all of these options are toggled on and checked. And then if I click the back arrow, the next option is isolated browsing. Now, please be aware that this may or may not be available depending on the version or edition of Windows that you are using. But if you have it available, it's a very good feature. It basically creates a secure environment inside Microsoft Edge, which is very handy when opening up unknown URLs or attachments. Very, very useful if you're using your computer or device to manage, for example, a business where you're getting emails from unknown people. Again, I do have a dedicated video on how to use and set this up. I will link that down below in the notes in the video description. And last is exploit protection. If you click on this, in short, I would recommend just going with the defaults, but if you need to make any changes, here they are. That's everything for this video. I will be doing a future video on additional Windows settings you can do to increase privacy and security, but the scope of this video was just to Windows Defender slash Windows Security. If you do have any comments or questions, please post them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it. And if you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and hit that join button, the subscribe button, and that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.